Thomas Duffy, welcome here in this this group. You are a young farmer, as my notes say, and as I can see still, and you have been the former vice president also of the European Council of Young Farmers. So very well also uh, involved and engaged on in politics on the European level. What, from your point of view, what is here the the most challenge that you see now for farmers in Ireland or in Europe? Uh, I suppose the most immediate challenge would be uh, water quality. Um, at the moment, Ireland is one of only two countries that currently receives a nitrates derogation. So that's an immediate challenge. But the overarching challenge for us is very much uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, Ireland has the largest percentage of agricultural emissions of any EU country and I think second only to New Zealand uh, globally. Um, and that's primarily because of our agricultural system um, being grass-based, uh, predominantly dairy and beef. Um, we do obviously have cropping and uh, pigs and poultry as well, but to a much lesser extent than those two systems. Um, so that that's a major challenge. The upside of that, uh, I suppose, and, and this is where it does get a little bit more complicated from a biodiversity point of view, is that um, our landscape is very much an agrarian landscape so not dissimilar to austria um so we have quite a lot of high nature value farms as we would refer to them biodiversity rich low intensity farms but we also have a challenge around particularly in the southeast of the country um intensification so we mentioned uh, i think in the piece about sustainable intensification which was a term used um and i suppose i can share a very quick image um that that i i maybe embeds that exact idea um sorry uh, let me just share that uh how does that look is that okay it's still loading up yeah and, and now you are not in the presentation mode but no, we see the powerpoint the mode. Yeah, yeah yeah i'm just gonna stick it on the presentation mode there um do 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 Oh, yeah, we'll skip through all that. Um, but essentially, this is a, a presentation which I or that a slide that I think really captured. So, on one side, we have quite intensively managed. Uh, I would say not intensive grassland, but intensively managed grassland with my dairy cows coming in. Um, they're perennial ryegrass clover mixes. Um, we have a lot. The landscape down below is is quite a rich perennial array. And on the other side of the slide, we have a nature meadow or a high nature value meadow which is full of um varieties and species which only exist because of uh, low intensity management and some people would say well we need more of one or we need more of the other but in that in reality actually both of these are my farm um and they are interlinked with each other because the one on the left hand side of the screen is how i am able to afford the one on the right hand side of the screen um and that's really really key I would have to make a decision as to whether to work off farm if I did not have the left hand side. And so the challenge then as well is trying to ensure that in those intensive areas, we also have as much biodiversity as possible. Um, and these are examples actually on the intensively managed block. You have uh, Ireland. Anyone who's ever visited Ireland will know the the a extensive level of hedgerows that we have that's to the far left which is managed for biodiversity in terms of pollinators um and also winter wintering bird species in the middle uh an unwanted plant on most farms uh it's actually an invasive ragworth uh plant uh but it is home to cinnabar moths and then on the the furthest right we have an example of um the actually partially endangered i think it's of least concern though uh peacock uh, uh, butterflies uh, or common tortoise shell butterfly, sorry, should get my one right. So uh, in terms of the signpost program, which we're involved in, um, I suppose these are just an example, uh, a more of a breakdown than than Tom had. That that slide is the, the, the top level stuff, exactly what we're doing. This is some of the stuff that we've done on our farm, obviously protected urea, um, very straightforward one and a good win. I have them shortened. So uh, AM is for ammonia gas. Um, so it's reducing ammonia gas, which is an impact on local biodiversity. We use low emission slurry spreading technology. That's helpful for both ammonia and also climate change because we use less nitrogen. Liming is climate change. Uh, the, the improving the genetics on the beef herd reduces land take as well. 
hedgerow management, as I mentioned there, milk recording and measurement, and then increasing the longevity of my cows. And then we have some of the technologies that we've adopted, I suppose, after we had um, uh, kind of embraced those, including sex semen. Uh, this year, we have had 28 calvings to dairy sires on my dairy herd, and 27 of those have been heifers. We have had a single bull. Um, and from a climate point of view, and even from a biodiversity point of view, that means that actually more of the animals that are born or are being reared for beef are of better quality. So they take less land, which is important from a biodiversity point of view. Clover incorporation reduces nitrogen. Uh, we'll, we'll skip over some of the rest of red clover and some other things that we're doing. And then in terms of the more costly stuff, uh, particularly some of it for biodiversity, ponds and rewetting. Uh, is something that we are looking at. Very contentious issue here in Ireland because we have a lot of peatland. I do have a small amount of area that I could probably afford to give back to nature in that way, uh, covering the likes of slurry tanks and then ensuring that runoff from roadways is not entering it. Uh, but I suppose the challenges in terms of embracing that, again, these are some of the pictures from my own farm on the left-hand side. Uh, cost of production um, is a major issue. Anything that puts up the cost of production for me is going to be very difficult for my the viability of my business. Time poorness, to be honest, any activity and the guys in Signpost are really good about this. They know that there's no point talking to Irish farmers in February, March or April uh, beyond very top level, you know, brief, maybe a farm walk to get off the farm because we're spring calvers, uh, the entire herd calves uh, basically in Ireland in a three month period. It's incredibly time poor. Um, and any any investments that we have to make or, or requirements or practices we have to make during the summer is not going to work. Cost of technology is obviously always a, a, a constant one and ensuring that we actually have access to the consumables that we need, so protected jury and others. So as I say, it's kind of a contradiction. Um, there's a couple of contradictions between some of this, so like the likes of uh, reducing the age of slaughter, but if that encourages more intensive grassland, and takes land out of extensive grassland, that could be a major challenge for biodiversity or losing high nature value farming, et cetera, to forestry to offset emissions. Consumers, unfortunately, are not very good at paying for any of the good practices that we want them to. It's a free market, particularly in Ireland, we're commodity producers for the most part. Uh, verification can often be onerous and, and actually the AgNav is a great example of taking some of that onerousness around because it avoids farmers having to do duplication and then changing policy and there seems to be a constant push to change policy and uh, everyone will have seen the protests lately and the, the moves that that's kind of changed so quickly. So yeah, broadly speaking, that is, I suppose, my um, whistle stop tour on, on some of the challenges. And again, I'm happy to talk through as a practical farmer why we adopted what we did, um, and I suppose what we hope to contribute to the climate and the globe as a whole and biodiversity. For further information, you can visit the Modern Acres website at modernacres.eu or do follow us on social media.